guys? I'm the Dow King, and today I have Matu from Layer One X. He is part of a revolutionary blockchain that we're going to talk to. He is CEO of Layer One X, and I also got AJ from EMP Money that everybody knows, and Jake from Dex Finance, who also everybody, literally everybody knows these guys. So welcome, thank you for coming, and Matu. We have a million questions for you guys because. Some of the stuff you guys are doing and you're claiming to do, people do not believe. So we're going to get into if you guys are actually a revolution or you're just messing around with everybody. Okay. Yeah, I love fair it. Enough. Yes. So be before we get into all of that, uh, can you, AJ, uh, can you kind of tell me how you and Dex Finance are also involved? Because there's a raise uh, going on here, which I can bring up the screen for everyone to see. How Absolutely. are you guys involved in all of this first? Yeah. Well, first of all, Dow King, it's a pleasure to be back, brother. Uh, I think, uh, again, I made this joke on some other AMAs, but uh, I think I need to have you on retainer, brother. Uh, we've done about 12, 40 of our videos together over the last few months. But yeah, man, we're happy to be here. Much love to you and your whole community. Uh, and yeah, we're excited, man. We uh, have had this opportunity, uh, again, kind of uh, fall in our lap. Uh, we, uh, uh, Machu has been an amazing part of our EMP community. Uh, he was part of what we call our EMP army uh, over the last year, uh, was very instrumental in, you know, helping us succeed. Uh, and so with that, we built relationships. And, you know, uh, as you've heard before, uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, and it's the business world a lot of the time. So uh, Machu took that position. Uh, with this brand new company called L1X. Uh, and, uh, you know, he said, AJ, you may want to take a look at this. So uh, over the last few months, uh, we've really been doing some due diligence into L1X. And uh, as you started early uh, with the, the big claims, uh, a lot of what we're seeing is that these claims are actually being backed and that, you know, actions speak louder than words. And we are really blown away by the technology that uh, this, this chain provides. Um, and so we, we're gonna build on L1X regardless. Uh, and again, uh, that's where Jake uh, from Dex Finance comes in. Uh, we have been working with them uh, on their uh, their vault technology. Uh, and, and you know, I said, hey, uh, there may be some opportunity here. Uh, Jake said, yeah, I've heard of L1X. Uh, how do I ape? Uh, that, that was his first question. Uh, <laughs> and then one thing led to another. Uh, and we presented a uh, proposal to L1X uh, through Machu and um, uh, some of their growth officers uh, over there and uh, to build an exchange. And we, didn't, we, we wanted to leverage the technology that L1X is providing uh, to have a revolutionary exchange. Uh, and, you know, we, we, uh, we were just going to build it regardless. But L1X was so blown away uh, by our proposal and, again, the relationship that we have uh, that they have awarded us the launch decks uh, of the chain. So we, you're going to yeah. make the launch decks? We are. E we're building EMP, EMP and Dex wow. Finance uh, has teamed up. We're, we're incorporating, uh, and Jay can talk more on this uh, as we go, because Jay has already been well underway uh, creating a DEX uh, that we were kind of going to duct tape everything together uh, in the background. Uh, but L1X provides a real solution where we, they don't have to worry about bridging. Uh, so again, we'll talk about all that. But that's how this all kind of started. Uh, and now we're excited to not only you know be the launch DEX, uh, but continue to support L1X. Uh, as okay. they roll out, so I'll, I'll back I'll back that claim up too. Uh, honestly, uh, previously, uh, previously, pre before meeting Machu and the team, um, they had a uh, a, a whitelist uh, opportunity for ten thousand dollars of presale, um, and I, I was trying to hit up AJ to see if I could open widen that gap a little bit. You know, <laughs> I, I thought it was uh, inter interesting enough to put more of my more of my bags in there. So. Uh can we um, can we talk about this and then we'll get into all the everything else first so this is the pre-sale totally. offering that you guys have right now and i'll put the link in the description so, so yeah we're we're, we're running a pre-sale uh, yeah we are we're doing it congruently with l1x and okay. uh it, again to for all the apes out there we'll get right to the the nitty-gritty <laughs> off the bat here but yeah it's a it's a uh, the pre-sale price uh is the seed round price which again, to have this opportunity uh, is unheard of. And the whole reason that L1X uh, allowed us to do this 
uh, was not only because of our proven community, uh, but it's also an amazing way to get a lot of tokens and a lot more hands. So we didn't, they didn't want to go the traditional uh, venture capitalist route, uh, even though the appetite is there. Uh, and they've already raised about 6.5 uh, million uh, on their, their, their side alone. Uh, and again, I'm personally invested. Uh, part of the EMP treasury uh, is also invested. Uh, but you're getting in at a pre-sale price. The launch price is at 50 cents. And historically speaking, uh, uh, every uh, successful uh, layer one, uh, uh, whether without even close to the tech uh, that L1X has, uh, has done a 42x from launch price. So again, I, I think that we could see AJ, some killer upside AJ, potential. You're, you're, you're talking dirty to people now. I know, I know now. <laughs> 40, I know, brother. 42x. <laughs> it's it. really dirty yeah, to people listening. Is. You can well, tell it's a real it, number yeah. too, though, because it, it didn't, he didn't say 100x. It's a, that's a calculator. That's an average. 42x. It is. Yeah, yeah no okay. exaggerating here for sure. And but again, I have that, that has, I, well, I have an important question here. Um, I see 10 cents and I see launch price 50 cents and then it says linear invested over 15 months. Does this mean I get tokens every single day for 15 months released to me? Is that what that means? So almost that okay. So yeah, it's not on a daily basis, but it's on a monthly basis. So uh, if you if you invested fifteen hundred dollars, you would get a uh, hundred dollars worth of L one X every month uh, for fifteen months. So uh, again, there is some opportunity cost with that. Uh, the vesting schedule starts when the chain goes live, uh, and Matu can talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, they're scheduled to launch uh on in august so they're already well ahead of their uh, uh schedule uh, and i know that's optimistic in terms of you know development uh but they have a working test that that, that has been running flawlessly so uh, i think that they can definitely meet that uh and uh by going through our uh pre-sale you're able to get around kyc and we're able to do that because we are the intermediary of the raise. So EMP has a, uh, a, a, a trust account that we will be KYCing to uh, L1X. So everything is fully uh, compliant. Uh, and then we will distribute uh, tokens um, to everybody so, based through the smart contract. So got, yeah. it, got it. Very interesting. So let's talk about what makes L1X so different, why everyone is talking about it, even people in my own community, and a lot of people actually don't believe you guys. So I'm going to get into why it is. And one of the things that you guys are doing, let me bring up this next page here. Well, this is your deck, but the world's fastest interoperable blockchain. Can you explain to us, Matthew, what that means, basically? Yeah, absolutely. Look, thank you so much for, for having me on and allowing me to talk about uh, Layer One X as well. Um, and I, I'll just start by saying AJ is probably a little bit humble there and saying that it, the, the Dex fell into his lap. Um, you know, I've known AJ for a long time, um, the EMP team, and we've had great conversations with with Jake and, uh, and the, the Dex finance team. And we're just thrilled that uh, those two teams and Jake and, and AJ are, are collaborating for the for the Dex. So I think he's a little bit humble to say he's falling on his lap. But uh, you know, it's it's, it's just as just as much our privilege to have them there that it, that it is for them to uh, to be able to build and leverage the features. But speaking of the features of uh, of Layer One X, so what it basically means is that um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of blockchains claim to have solved the the blockchain trilemma, which is decentralization, scalability, and security. However, we see that uh, it's it's beyond a trilemma that needs to be solved. It really is a what we call a quartet, four uh, features that really need to be delivered under one hood, and that that fourth feature being interoperability. And once again, some other um, chains claim interoperability, but it's more so that they're they're building around maybe a, a parachain community like Polkadot, or uh, they're using maybe a, a Tendermint consensus in IBC like Cosmos, but it's limited what it can transfer. For us, uh, decentralized interoperability means not only the transfer of assets between any chain that we're interconnected with, uh, but also the transfer of logic. Meaning, what that means is that smart contracts can now talk to each other cross-chain to collaborate in ways that potentially we've never seen before. And 
I can give you some some sort of examples, but how it works is through our consensus mechanism, a chain, if you're wanting to transfer assets, uh, normally you most of those, well, many people will be using a bridge, right? And depending on which chain you want to go to from, if, if, let's say you're on Binance, you, you'd have to use a different bridge to go to Phantom or a different bridge to go to, to Ethereum. Yeah. Um, with us, it's all through one decentralized consensus mechanism, meaning what happens in that we take the bridge away. Uh, normally, what with a bridge, it's a third-party centralized application where you have to trust that the bridge is, rec is receiving the message and then passing on the message, meaning receiving the tokens and passing on the tokens. So there's a level of trust there. What we do is we take away the bridge aspect and we put in a decentralized system, fully transparent, where there is a receipt coming from the source chain of what happened on that chain and a receipt confirming that. And then another receipt going to the destination chain to confirm that that happened on the destination chain and that these two intera interactions are combined, are the same. So what happened from here and ended up here is the, the exact same transfer. Whereas a bridge, you don't have that receipt in between. You have to trust what happened, let's say from Matic to ABEX, for example, you have to trust what, what was requested on Matic and what happened on AVAX was actually the same thing and no one got in between to create corruption or exploit. So we take that out. We so take the bridge will no longer be a thing with your token? Like it's Absolutely. no longer exists. No more bridges. Yep. So like, <laughs> so for example, if I have a layer one X token and I want to make a transaction on, let's say Binance Smart Chain, what would I do? Yeah, so um, there's a few things you could do. Um, let's say you want to um, to uh, spend, you, you want to transact on Binance Smart Chain through the Layer One X wallet. You could use L One X token as the transaction fee, as the gas token, rather than having BNB. You would just use L One X to transact on BNB, Ethereum, Phantom. Right now, pre-launch, we're already interconnected with eight different chains. That's Ethereum, Binance, Phantom, AVAX, Matic, Arbitrum, Optimism, and Solana. So EVM but and not have, So you guys can take the the token, obviously, you you can be gas. So you would be the gas fee on my MetaMask, or are you going to have your own wallet? How is that going to work? Yeah, we'll have our own wallet. Um, so that so wallet no, Meta, no, no MetaMask integration. It's going to only work interoper interoperably on your own wallet. Uh, we are also MetaMask integrated because uh, we're, we're also EVM compatible. We've got our own virtual machine, uh, but we're EVM compatible. So uh, MetaMask can be integrated in, in there. So you can actually do, uh, you can use your MetaMask wallet if you wish to do uh, the cross-chain transfer of assets, but it will be through the Layer 1X wallet where you can hold all your tokens from any chain we're interconnected with in one place. There's no, you know, when you're on MetaMask, you've got to click on Ethereum uh, blockchain to see all your Ethereum assets. You, you've got to click on Binance to see. With us, it'll be all held in one place in one user-friendly way and allowing you to transact in the L1X token as the gas token on any of those chains. So you are the gas token on any of those chains, on any of these wallets. So basically, um, you would, okay, all right. But let's say I have USDC on Binance and I want to go to ETH. Where do you guys, would you guys fall? Would you guys do anything besides offer gas? Or let's say I'm USDC on the layer one, but I need to move that layer one to ETH. How would I do that? Yeah, perfect. So let's yeah. say, um, so we actually have a video. Uh, it's it's out there now, which shows uh, moving USDC from Matic or USDT, I believe it is from Matic. Okay. Uh, and transferring that cross chain to AVAX to USDC. So, uh, in that video, you our system allows you to take that USDT from Matic, transfer it cross chain in a decentralized way into USDC on AVAX, and for us, we, we compare it with uh, Layer Zero Stargate Finance, which is their kind of bridging application. Mm -hmm. um, so with us, it took about fifty three seconds from the start to finish, and it cost two cents. With Stargate Finance, it cost twenty eight cents, which is fourteen times more. And it took 22 minutes or 23 minutes to do that transaction. 
And through us is the decentralized uh, interoperability where you get a receipt. So with our system, you can go into the Explorer and you can see what we call a UUID, which is almost like a, a universal ident identification of a receipt. There's four receipts. There's the transaction on the Matic chain, the receipt on L1X from that transaction. There's a transaction on the AVAX chain and a receipt connecting that on the L1X uh, um, uh, chain as well. So you know that that whole thing is being tracked all the way from Matic to AVAX and it's all the same flow. So there's there's no room for exploit. There's no there's no gray area in terms of that, that transfer. You, you know what, I'll take that a step further actually, um, since we're talking about the DEX a little bit as well. Um, mm. What, you know, what the tech from L1X allows uh, allows the capabilities of being able to get these assets from chain A to chain B, whatever that is, right? Um, you know, their wallet specifically, you know, uh, maybe allows for Solana, which is not available on MetaMask, right? So they're kind of opening the doors up, right? Um, but in theory, you still need to be, you need to exchange these somewhere, right? So that's kind of where the DEX comes in. Um, one of the one of the kind of like the key features we're offering is, um, is gasless sw swaps. So in theory, you can you could be on MetaMask or the L1X wallet with any token you want, and be able to ch uh, exchange that for not only other, any other token, but any other token on any other exchange, without having any gas gas tokens at all. Okay, yeah, that that part of it I, I really like because I was actually having problems with gas today. I was trying to buy an NFT on a mint, and I didn't have gas uh, Ethereum because Ethereum is expensive and. You know, and um, even after I transferred, it still didn't work. It still said I de needed more Ethereum, which is crazy. Uh, so it's just like, it's a pain in the ass. Now I got to go keep getting more Ethereum. So it's, you know, I could see this. I could see this being a yeah. big benefit. Totally. It, and it, yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, Dal. No, no, go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so no, and just to back up, Jake, really fast. And again, I know uh, that, that it, this is new technology, man. And to really wrap your head around it, I mean, we it took us months to really see the potential here of, of how this will work. And, you know, that's why Jake and I uh, put this proposal together in terms of a DEX. Uh, and L1X knows how, you know, uh, pivotal a successful uh, launch DEX will be for all of us. And with this tech, again, to, to Jake's, uh, a point here, you know, you'll be able to transfer tokens um, uh, within our exchange. So it'll act much more like a centralized uh, mm -hmm. exchange in terms of, you know, the front end and the user experience, but you'll have all uh, non-custodial uh, wallets. I mean, you'll be able to connect Again, like Matthew said, your MetaMask or your L1X uh, wallet, uh, and actually have custody of your assets, which again is unbelievable. I mean, we we saw how popular uh, FTX became, uh, you know, just because it was so uh, user friendly. Uh, it was uh, a great way to onboard uh, people. You know, you could drag and drop uh, limit orders, or you know, set your stop losses uh, easily. Uh, it's not like an AMM, you know, like we're used to. With, with pancake swap or or uniswap and so by combining all this we feel like the decks will be pivotal in you know having all this come to life uh where people do uh, are are able to transact without using a bridge uh and and like Matthew said there's there's even so much more to it than that because not only can you transact uh tokens cross chain but you can transact nfts uh logic and uh, logic as well so we we could see for, for that example, you just said, Dow King, say you're interacting with a contract on Ethereum. Well, now you have the ability to reward a user on a different chain. So now they don't have to worry about those high gas fees on ETH, but now they have all the capital efficiency of Ethereum and all the access to all the TVL of literally the top eight chains. So, you know, a layer one X is kind of, uh, again, I made this joke in a previous AMA uh, that said L1X is going to be the chain to rule them all. Uh, but really, it's the chain that will unite all of the blockchains. Uh, and that is truly powerful. Yeah, so, and I'll just add to that a bit. So at the moment, this is the beauty of, of the interoperability is that uh, the DEX doesn't have to worry about bridging. It, it takes the, the that risk away. And it takes the risk away for any developers. Anyone building on layer 1X can tap into the interoperability and not need bridges. So right at the moment with those eight chains, 
they're already uh, accessing 80% of all the TVL across all chains. And then we have the ability to connect to any chain, so any public or private chain. Uh, so as we, our relationship with the DEX will be pivotal as we both look at where are the users, where are the demand, and that will help uh, kind of direct us and continuing to add, continuing to add chains, whether it be near, whether it be Polkadot, whether it be Cosmos, whether it be um, any chain that we see the advantage for the user. So this DEX, and this is this is a selfish question, um, Matu. I ask a lot of selfish questions because unlike most YouTubers, I'm actually an investor first. So <laughs> this is just for me because I own both DEX and uh, EMP money because I keep hearing about this DEX and I'm getting a little interested in this. Is this DEX going to be a big revenue driver for you guys at, at uh, DEX and uh, EMP money? Yeah, so I can answer and then Matri and Jay can uh, kind of fill in here. So yeah, we, we have made it a specific uh, 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 vision to actually use the L1X token as the native asset of the DEX. So unlike okay. uh, PancakeSwap, uh, they have a reward token called Cake. And cake is very highly inflationary, uh, uh, highly speculative, you know, uh, and really the only use case other than staking uh, is to sell it. <laughs> so typically that's not a good uh, a good economic model. And so, you know, uh, PancakeSwap uses some of the fees um, to buy back their cake token, but we, we wanna do things much different. We wanna focus on actual uh, real revenue. So uh, what will happen is, uh, and this is the plan. Again, we'll be releasing a, a, a white paper uh, for this uh, uh, through the DEX itself. But uh, the idea is that you are actually using L1X uh, and then being able to either stake your L1X or provide liquidity with L1X or any other uh, asset, any liquidity provider, um, uh, and then be rewarded simply through a revenue share of the fees of the DEX. So again, this will be much more streamlined uh, okay. and just to put some numbers uh, behind that. I mean, uh, PancakeSwap does about $400,000 a day in fees right. uh, and, and Uniswap does about 4 million. So uh, we, we feel like we could get a, a large portion of the market share because we are offering a better solution uh, and at a very cheaper price as well. So uh, okay. not having to worry about high gas fees. Uh, uh, to transact. So, uh, yeah, and, and how that benefits EMP uh, and, and DEX finance is obviously we'll have equity uh, in in the DEX. And, you know, we're, we're hoping to not, the, the large majority of the fees will go to, uh, again, liquidity providers. Uh, but even if we're able to, to have uh, a small percentage, uh, it could be thousands of dollars a day uh, to our ecosystems uh, individually, for sure. Yeah, I mean, same same situation here. Everyone, uh, everyone, all of my holders know that uh, you know deck, deck share has always been the uh, the the governance token moving forward. Um, all of our all of our revenue uh, will be directed back towards real yield incentives for for the people. So I mean, there'll be there'll be rewards on the decks in L1X, but uh, the profit all goes back to our individual communities. Um, I actually have a, a uh, I have like a 15 page manifesto coming out at the end of the end of the week here. <laughs> Anyone's interested in the deep dive in our, our our economics, you can check that out. I mean, this is a uh, this is very exciting for both of you because this investment, if it goes right, could uh, drive a lot of value for DEX and EMP long term. For sure. Well, yeah. and it's bullish for sorry to tell you update, but uh, it's also bullish for L1X because by having it be the native token of the DEX, we're also launching. Uh, with immediate use case and so yeah. again you know we we it's going to be and jake and i share this vision uh you know in our individual ecosystems we want to make it where it's more lucrative to hold your your asset and and earn through the yield than selling it and if well, we can yeah accomplish that for l1x it could be massive yeah. well first of all um so this is going to be given out as a yield, like a yield farming token, basically, also. So it could create some selling pressure, right, if you do it like that? Well, it won't be inflationary. So not oh. really, because it'll okay. simply be the rewards will be from the revenue. Uh, again, all the transaction fees on the DEX oh, will I be see. in L1X. So uh, it's, it's non-inflationary, uh, and it just depends on the volume. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it, the people, people could sell that, but... 
it's not inflationary and really they're incentivized to stake it or add more liquidity to get even more L1X. So yeah. Does that I make sense? Um, just to follow up on the people, well mentioning the... um mentioning as well that uh, to add to the, the ecosystem of the DEX, the DEX itself will also has it have an engineering layer on top of the DEX, meaning that the DEX built on layer one X will tap into the interoperability, the scalability, but then anyone that building on top of the DEX will tap into everything that layer one X offers plus the liquidity of the DEX. And I think Jake, if you maybe even talk more on DEX vaults, how yeah, that just, will then leverage that and then provide more um, activity in the ecos the DeFi ecosystem of the DEX on the L1X. Yeah, I was just going to try to get that one out. Um, mm. You know, for, you know, for us and, and AJ as well, you know, we already have, you know, the, the, both of us already have uh, SaaS products that we're using. Um, so, I mean, what, I mean, I, when I originally spoke to AJ about this, you know, one, one you know, the first fold, obviously a little selfish, like, like yourself, uh, I wanted, I wanted the investment opportunity. Um, but, you know, obviously uh, I'm always looking for opportunities for, our, our products and our communities. Um, so, you know, when I originally spoke to Machu, it was, Hey, how can I get, you know, maybe some of this grant money or how can I, how can I leverage the, uh, the technology to use in the vaults and the ETFs? Right. So like, you know, we're, we'll have the decks and it's going to be great. Um, you know, as, so like L1 X is the base layer. Think of, uh, the decks is going to be the L2 the layer two on top of that. But then, you know, things like the vaults, which is like the third layer on it, um, now can offer all this technology kind of going through the decks, through the through the, the blockchain layer um, to allow for things like actual cross chain vaults. Right. Like where you could have, um, you know, an AVAX pair, a BNB pair and a, and a polygon pair all in the same oh, vault, taking rewards from those cool. different vaults. So you can actually tap into like the liquidity on a AVAX proper and not have to get some peg version on some crappy exchange. That, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. same thing, same thing with the ETS, right? You could have, um, you know, actual single assets of, you know, our, um, our, our, uh, we call it the, the, uh, the onion, uh, it, the, it's, it's basically all the L1s, you know, but you could have actual L1s and not, um, you know, the peg versions on each one. Really cool. I'm excited yeah. about that. That's exactly. really and cool. the beauty. This is where the, uh, the, the scalability part. So we talked about the interoperability, um, the scalability part really comes into play on something like a, maybe like an auto compounder. Let's say it is using um, native LP pairs on the on on layer one X. At transaction, the, the base layer fee is no more than one cent. So if you can imagine the capital efficiency on an auto compounder that now can compound at will um, without having to pay you know twenty cents on on, on Binance or you know five dollars on Ethereum. Just the capital efficiency of of the APYs that can be generated from that. Honestly, that's it's a it's a huge a huge deal too uh, that we have we don't actually talk about enough. But um, just going from you know we launched the vaults on BNB um, and everyone thought it was amazing, right? But then uh, all of a sudden, then we went to a Canto and you know fees are like you know twenty percent of what they were, right? And then we went to Phantom and it's like you can run all these vaults for like a couple cents, right? <laughs> so, but you know, they don't, Phantom doesn't have all the, you know, liquidity that some of these other chains do. So, you know, being able to do all that uh, on layer, layer one with, um, you know, with that capital efficiency and essentially tap into the biggest liquidity, liquidity pairs um, all at that same one cent t cap is just, it's phenomenal. Interesting. Now, what I want to do is I want to focus on a few questions that are more about the financial side of all of this, because as much as the technology we talk about, which we're going to, we've talked about a lot here, a lot of these projects sink or swim based on the financial setup. That's just mm. facts. You know, like I've seen some of the greatest projects and they failed because the financial setup sucked. So uh, I, I, I'm going to bring up your, your whole entire DAX here. That, I mean, the whole, uh, what do you call it? infographic that you guys have here. It's really cool. The DAC. And by the way, all the stuff, I'm going to put all the links down here for you guys. Uh, please, if you already haven't done so, make sure to subscribe and like this video and share it because this is actually a really cool project. This is not your typical DGEN project that's out here that's uh, probably not going to be around in three months or two months. This is a long-term project. So before I even get there, my question to you, Matthew, is where is the major, majority of the team like base, where are you guys based out of? For which country? Yeah, there's about there's basically uh, approximately about 25 team members already. 
Uh, we have um, eight core top tier developers that have been working on the project for a long time. In fact, the, the project concept was, was born from Kevin Cotino, our founder, um, creating a, a, a base white paper, then working with the University of Western Australia, which is our, which is where most of us are based in Western You're Australia. You're mostly Australian, okay. Correct, yeah. Um, and so uh, with the University of Western Australia, the help um, and working with Kevin to create the concepts and then build, uh, it, it just means that we took the time to ensure that the concepts, I mean, like for example, one of the fundamental principles of Layer 1X is that all users should have access to all chains and all applications on those chains. And it seems simple, it seems common sense, but it's an extremely hard thing to do. Uh, so they started building out these principles and then building the project itself. Um, so it could align itself with those core principles, putting the user yeah. at the center. Mm. So, um, so tokenomics is a very good question though. Um, right. And I can go into more, more about that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to bring this up and, you know, and then we'll get into some of the other stuff because, uh, tokenomics drive these projects whether you guys out there and this yes. is not financial advice but the, the financial part of these projects you'll be surprised is you know and, and you guys can read about it all this stuff too i mean not only it's basically an operable uh the inoperability of it there's also the scalability the speed and the security which is all here and outlined and we'll talk more about that but this is what i found most fascinating this doc right here when i was going through this doc I ran into something that I think it's on number 20. Let's get all the way to 20, which I found to be incredibly, incredibly fascinating, which is, oh, not 20. Maybe it's a little bit more. Oh, there you go. This one, token release schedule. You have a 30-year token release schedule. I've never, yes. I don't think I've ever seen a 30-year token release schedule. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I can talk. Oh, let me what go, is going let me on? <laughs> yeah, let me do a bit of bit of explanation on, around okay. the tokenomics. Because, and at Dow, you brought up bring up a really good point. Um, the tip could be amazing, and I think we can all agree. You know, you, myself, AJ, and Jake, is that the tokenomics and the financials behind the project really dictate its sustainability in a okay. lot of in a lot of ways. Uh, so we 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 took we took great great uh, efforts in um, in connecting with Prism Group. To work with us on the tokenomics and they're well renowned for token token economics with layer one uh, blockchains so part of the the tokenomics themselves are yes they 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 vest out um, or release out over a period of 30 years um, and there's a few reasons two key reasons i or key points i think that why that's makes that interesting is it's longer than normal i think what it does it, it creates a smoothing of the inflation uh, over that period because it's going over a long time. But it, it also, I suppose, is a testament to our mindset is that we are building for a long time here. If you talk to our, our founder, Kevin Cotino, um, even though we've achieved so much in uh, in the last two years that's been built, we're about 10% of the way to, to achieving everything we have, all the capabilities we believe that we can achieve. So that's going to take, um, you know, some 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 further development and further further funds and that's why we smooth it out over such a long time because most of that 55 percent of the token release or the token allocation goes to what we call the treasury which is split up into six different components each of those components uh, relate to either growth or incentive for participation on the network the growth pool itself will extend out i believe that's the one that will stand out for 30 years allowing us to continue to build out as we add you know, as we move to 15% of capability, 20%, 25%, 30%. But one thing I, I don't think is in the deck, um, which is a really interesting point, is that we're going to get this utility. And, and as AJ and Jake say, we're kind of they're kind of working their tokenomics towards the L1X token being the being the the Dex token. But on top of the utility of that, there the tokenomics themselves. I think I know I'm biased here, but I think they're beautiful. I think they, they they work in alignment so well with with what layer one x is which is built for mass adoption and mass use case where the fees that come through those fees are distributed into three different areas 50 percent of those fees 
will actually be go go to the full nodes to reward those people staking L1X token and participating in terms of securing the network. So okay. that will add a utility to L, uh, to the L1X token in terms of staking on the on, on the no, full nodes as well. Twenty five percent. Are, the, no are, are the nodes are the nodes for sale too or no? Yeah, so they will be. So from launch, and they will be. Um, we're yet to get an uh, like an exact on that, but it'd be fairly inexpensive compared to a lot of other chains to be actually to set up a node and run a node. Once Can again, you, do you know how many X one tokens you need to layer one tokens you need to own to get a node? Uh, I can't give the exact because we're still working out what the limits are. But um, okay. we've we've been asked that question a couple of times, probably in the last few weeks. So we'll have something out to give you some more specifics awesome. around the nodes themselves. Uh, but in terms of the distribution of those fees, 25% also then go of the fees go to uh, to reward the validators. Now, interestingly enough, validators on the Layer One X system are smart devices, so it could be a mobile phone. Some of the listeners right now could have a mobile phone in their hand. That could be a validator on the system. Um, you know, a, a smartwatch, uh, a, a smart refrigerator. You know, anything a sort of smart device has the capability to do that. It means that in terms of validate, in terms of validators, we could potentially have millions to billions potential validators on the network securing and decentralizing it. But another interesting part about the tokenomics is that 25% of the fees go to the foundation where they'll either be reinvested or they will be burnt. So we have a, have a hard cap of 1 billion tokens. And as we build out in terms of use case and, and activity, more and more tokens will be burnt going through to the foundation. So creating a deflationary mechanism. So we've got the got utility it. side of it, uh, giving mass utility to the token, whether it's through the DEX, whether it's through staking, whether it's through having L1X token in your wallet for transaction fees on any chain. But you add the deflationary mechanism to the token itself, it just makes it highly attractive to hold the L1X token. Um, so when I look at this graph, I see 2023, 2024, 2025, most of the tokens will be released pretty early on. Are you worried about any of that creating, um, you know, obviously part of that is that 15 month vesting period that we looked at. So are you worried that any of that is going to um, create any selling pressure? I mean, it, it will, it will create some selling pressure, but you know, it also will depend on the market. If we're in a bull market, bear market, all these factors, like how have you kind of thought about all of these factors coming into play? Yeah, that, great question. So yes, we have, um, and this is probably why we took the time to seek out prison group and spent months and months on doing the tokenomics, including the release schedule. So uh, as you say, and you point out correctly, is there that the release of those tokens uh, over that, say, over that first initial part, uh, through to the um, to part of where the where the private sale is now, uh, we've got the public um, sale, which will be uh, pre-launch for the re release of those tokens. The great thing about um, the L1X tokenomics is that that burning mechanism that we have in the uh, in, in the transaction fees, plus the utility that will all already be on offer for the token, plus the staking opportunities. That will already be on uh, that will already be on offer with the decks that will launch from and and also the projects that we're talking to that will uh, that will be building already on uh, layer one X adds a utility and the burning mechanism to be able to offset the the inflation or the release of the tokens. Um, of course, there's still going to be market uh, you know market factors that will determine that, but. We're confident in the fact that the amount of projects that have approached us and are still approaching us to build on us, in terms of the utilization of the token, we're really confident that we're going to see really high activity on the chain compared to a lot of other L1 chains very early in the piece from launch even. Totally. And real fast with that too, Dow King. Um, again, I think people under the demand on, on launch as well. The only way to get L1X is to buy it. If you haven't gotten into a pre-sale uh, or, or you know, any of the the, the uh, pre-sale rounds, so uh, I think that's really under underestimated. And Maju, to that point, can you go into the market cap 
uh, really fast. I mean, the the uh, fully diluted market yeah. cap, uh, as well as the the launch. I mean, again, when you hear this, you'll see the upside potential for sure. Yeah. So, um, so the fully diluted, um, and for anyone who doesn't know what that means, it basically means if all the tokens were on the market right now, that would be the the, the total kind of market cap at that point. So, fully diluted uh, at a fifty cent um, token price, which is the uh, the public sale price prior to launch that's 500 million fully diluted however there's only going to be approximately about 10 percent circulating supply on market so it actually gives a, a circulating market cap of only 50 million at launch right. yeah, I for saw that. that yeah for that and so and one thing and in terms of utility and if i can talk a little bit about that in terms of how the logic plays into probably something that's really hard to quantify but if i can give you maybe examples how cross-chain logic cross-chain interoperability may cause a massive amount of activity uh coming through our consensus and coming through a consensus generating those fees feeding back into the the staking um rewards and the and the, the burning mechanism is that and i'll do this through some examples so if you can imagine logic transferring across chain and interoperability of assets across chain. So let's take a few examples. Let's look at um, decentralized lending platforms. So now decentralized lending platforms can collaborate with each other in terms of cross-chain collateralization, cross-chain borrowing. Uh, let's have a look at gaming. Gaming platforms now can collaborate cross-chain where they can uh, either, those NFTs can now be, now be um, used in multiple games cross-chain you could have uh, cross-chain tournaments of games where games can team up. You could have a token where uh, you it would be able to be minted on Layer One X, but that token could really be a universal gaming token where it could be used on any game that uh, on any chain we're interoperable with. You could cross-chain. So here's one thing we're doing with NFTs. If you can imagine, you mint an NFT you can still use that NFT, whether it be in a game or it's yielding utility, but have it actually for sale on three different NFT marketplaces on three different chains at the same time while oh, you're okay. using it. Uh, because of the logic that we can, that going cross chain. So some of the things, it's really hard to quantify and uh, I suppose rationalize in our minds because we haven't seen these things before. So that, I, I, I'm really excited about the, the logic cross chain and the activity that's going to build uh, because once people start to realize what is possible with that, we're going to see innovation. We're going to see collaboration that we've never seen before uh, in blockchain. How, how much funding did you guys get to start all of this? Because I see you started the foundation in November 2022. Where did that yeah. initial funding come from? It was just a total. So that was through the seed round, seed investors. And it was approximately 1.6 million that got started back then. So, and we're really we're really quite lean. I mean, our, our founder Kevin, Co yeah, it's very lean. And our founder Kevin Coteno uh, is a developer in himself. He's he's built a few projects with blockchain. He's um, provided some some really useful co um, contributions to open source. But he has has extremely good connections within the developer world in terms of top talent. So in terms of the build process, it really wasn't much it, it, in terms of costs. I mean, look at Aptos, they raised like 300 million, whatever they raised to feed the, you know, those fat wages yep. from Meta, from the, from the guys from Meta, but we don't need that. We don't need that. We, we, we can stay lean and where we're going to spend money is where we need to spend money. Um, right. What was the valuation of that 1.6 million? Like, was it like one cent, five cents, 10 cents? Do you know? Do you remember? Yeah, it was, it, it, it was almost exactly, it was, I, I think, a exactly or very close to 8.8 .8 cents wow not so much lower than the 10 cents to the public sale exactly exactly wow. and that's that just i think goes towards the seed round investors believe so much i mean they were willing to invest when we did the seed round months and months ago last year to invest at that level knowing that we're going into this it's crazy right at 10 cents just because the the capability or the potential of the platform and it's not just the potential you can use the test net now and if you've got the link or if you haven't i can share that with you you can go on now and start playing with the interoperability so you can really see it yeah, yeah if you give me that link i'll also put it in the description so you can yep, just put it in the absolutely. chat here um yep. so this is interesting i'm looking at your roadmap here 
Um, it says February 2023, which we just passed. And then it says L1X multi-chain wallet. Has that wallet been launched yet? No. Yeah, so that's being no. that's where we're building that out, building out. Um, right now uh, for the wallet. Um, so we've started build, I believe, uh, I haven't got the dev workflow yet, but I believe that's due to be completed or the at least the MVP due to be completed by the end of this month. Okay, and then I see private token sale, which is probably this one that's going on. But then in yep. June, July, I see another private token sale. Is there going to be another token sale around June, July too? Yeah, that's the public token sale. Um, oh, so that's going to be at a higher price then. Correct. That's the fifty cent price. So right now it's ten cents. Yeah, and then June, okay. July is uh, is the fifty cents. Now, in terms of the progress we're making, in terms of the roadmap. We could actually launch this in July. We're on track to launch it in July, but we've made the decision as a team to actually look to August to launch. Just everyone's back from holidays in the, yeah. the normal norm summer holidays. They're in front of the computer ready to buy. So we're ahead of schedule in terms of the August release, but that's been a, just a decision we've made in terms of where the market will be in August versus July. And if they want to partake in the the particular round, the pre-sale round or seed round, whatever you call it right now, uh, the link yes. I'll have here, That's is that uh, in BUSD? Is that on the Binance Smart Chain? And there's four different chains that you can, uh, so it's USDC or USDT on either Ethereum, Matic, AVAX, or Binance. So this over here, they can do in any of, oh, wow. That's, that, that's really cool. Okay, that makes yeah, it easy. Jake, Jake and Dex Finance, they built that up, uh, that, that page up. So yeah, we, uh, and again, we send, the funds collected, we send uh, in batches to L1X. Uh, so anybody looking at the holding wallets, uh, if you're getting into the pre-sale, you're guaranteed those tokens. So and we did have a, we had a soft cap, uh, but again, L1X was gracious enough to uh, remove that and say, uh, anybody getting in is guaranteed uh, their tokens until that hard cap uh, is met. And we, again, are the only pre-sale uh, because we're acting right. as the intermediary, we're the only pre-sale you can get around uh, the KYC. So if you want to transact in uh, that dirty, dirty fiat, uh, you got to go through uh, L1X directly. So, yeah. So, so basically, uh, AJ, like if this is going to go on until you reach $5 million, correct? Like it'll go on all the way to June or July if necessary. I'm not saying you're going to go there, but this is no, not, no, no, it won't now. No. So we, uh, we, okay. we have a, we have a date of March 14th. Um, again, you know, March there, there 14th. May be, yeah, okay. Mar March 14th is the, the date, uh, on our end, I think L1X may extend their presale, uh, again, uh, depending on what happens. Yeah, I don't want to speak of uh, Roger, but we're talking, you know, only weeks, uh, not months, because again, they have a timeline they have to uh, abide by as well. So yeah, right, Machu. Again, I don't want to speak. Yeah, to I can speak to Go that ahead. a little bit. So it was really uh, important for us to give the opportunity to the everyday investor uh, in terms of, and not just normally a private sale. As you can see, the seed round was so close to the private sale pricing that um, the private sale would normally be reserved for VCs. So, but what we wanted to do is we want to try to put this in the hands of the everyday investor or the everyday contributor as much as we could. So uh, while we, we won't leave it uh, uh, open forever, we'll, we will look to probably close this off at the end of the month because we just can't run it forever. But the reason why we're doing this uh, this this pre-sale with this, this opportunity for the everyday investor is because we want to give them that chance to get in really where a VC would normally get in. Now, um, so we'll, we'll leave it open, uh, you know, and probably until the end of the month, but we already have plenty of large investors that would we've already had at least three parties offer us the whole 10 million to take it up we don't want to do that we want to distribute we want to give as many people as the opportunity as much as we can but we can't leave it over uh, open forever so from our end we'll probably leave it open to the end of march where whatever if there's anything remaining we have plenty of whales to gobble it up so you guys are going to raise 10 million and then over here they're going to raise another 5 million and then the, it's no the, that's part of the max cap sorry to that's interrupt you now all together yep. All together is 10 million. Got it. But you guys have already raised 6.5 million yourselves. Yeah. We have commitments. We already have commitments yeah. for 6.5 million. However, what we would what we would like to and these the commitments already know that that if we raise 
uh, the full amount through the private sale, we will scale them back. Got we it. We will scale it. them back. So, so my question is this: Let's say I get into this fifteen hundred dollars over fifteen months. Hundred dollars uh, would get released to me on the first day of trading. Correct. Well, not really. Let's talk of it in tokens because if if okay. you're only getting your money back, why invest, right? So, fifteen hundred dollars will get you fifteen thousand tokens. That's right. Now that means fifteen hundred tokens will be released to you. Uh, sorry. Um, so a thousand tokens will be released to you every month for 15 months. Now the value of those tokens is where the speculation comes in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We don't know what the value is guys. This is, they're not promising you any, anything or rewards. There's no APY. There's no 2% a day. There's nothing. So this well, is on, on day one though, that, that 15% actually turns out to be 33% of your initial capital. So. Yeah, that's, that's a, a launch number, price. Great number point, Jay. To think about. Yeah, that's right. If, you, if, you sell it, if you sell it at that launch price. Correct. Or, yeah, that's or, your... and, it could go, and it could go higher. Yeah, so that's you know, just the baseline. Don't don't dump on day one, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and again, I mean, that's... I mean, it's a 5X uh, yeah. on day one. That's going to be tough for some people to resist. To resist. Well, <laughs> well, that's hey, what we invested over 15 months, right? Exactly. Well, and yeah. hey, once we roll out the economics of the DEX <laughs> yeah. uh, and all the utility of that L1X token... I mean, just imagine again the volume, you know, and, and that's what we're we're relying on because we will be cheaper than any other decks uh, out there, and, and we will have the volume because again, the only way to get the L1X token uh, and to really facilitate uh, a lot of the things we talked about today will be going through the deck. So, uh, you know, that rev share could be massive uh, for those that want to, you know, stake or, or provide liquidity. That there, there will be AP. There will be APY. <laughs> Yeah, just, there will be a good eye on that for sure. Yeah. Will you guys uh, launch on any DEX, DEXs that we know of, or is it all going to be decentralized? It will absolutely be launched on uh, the DEX, the launch DEX. Uh, we're still, we, we, we will consider launching on uh, a centralized exchange. We just want to see where the market's at. Um, at that point rather than got we've, we've got a few that we're talking to but we don't want to make that decision yet uh we'll, we'll have a look at the landscape but 100 you know, we'll be launching through the launch decks that AJ thing, and Jake are doing. one thing to consider too um you know we we've essentially gotten rid of the bridges but the way that it that uh, the mechanics work of that um uh requires there to be liquidity on both sides right so um the L1X side obviously will be covered 100%, um, but it also gives us the opportunity to work with other existing DEXs out there um, to pull in their liquidity from those exchanges, right? You know, we can go to Trader Joe, we can go to PancakeSwap and, you know, try to collaborate and see if they want to, you know, provide liquidity for their on their side of it. Um, so those are, those are definitely options as well. I mean, if you guys are going to make the bridge obsolete, you're going to also affect multi-chain. That would be dead also. Um if you guys do all of these things, uh, your valuation is, uh, I would say, very reasonable. If you can, yeah. right? It all comes out well, of you you, Yeah, to give you an example. So in the first seven days of January, which is traditionally quiet, right? Uh, there was almost $100 million worth of value bridged just in the first seven days right. of January. Um, and I believe now taking the risk away from, I mean, and this is in the face of the risk. I mean, $2 billion of, of, of uh, hacks uh, from bridge hacks happened in 2022. You take that risk out, imagine the appetite to go cross-chain then. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people are skeptical. You're, I've, I've had people even in my own Dow King uh, Discord say there, there's no way. And I just went to your test night and I'm looking around. And I'm going to play with it. But it looks like does work i mean i haven't done the transactions yet but you guys have a test net that people can look around is this is this your comeback to what people say this is too good to be true you go go to our 100%. test net. okay yeah so i we're, gotta we're go gonna, around on this yeah absolutely and then that's that's what we want people to do i mean it's probably everyone's journey where they've learned most of their their blockchain and crypto knowledge through doing right and seeing is right. believing the old adage seeing is believing so when we wrote the white paper, we looked at it ourselves and, and, and went, no one's going to believe this. <laughs> you know, So we need to show them. We, let's give them some proof. 
that it actually works. And that's why the test net, as we, as we build out the capabilities, you'll be able to play around with all those capabilities pre-launch through that test net. Um, so you, you'll be able to do what, um, as we build out the features and functions, you'll be able to see that it's working before we even launch. And I think that's, that's proof in the pudding and that, that's what gives it power, really. Well, this is exciting. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put all the links for everybody uh, at the bottom of the description in the video. You guys can click on it. The test net, uh, all the deck, the pre-sale page. Please understand guys, do your own research here. There are risks associated to these things. They gotta launch, they gotta build it out. There's a lot of risks. So do your own research. Make sure that you understand what this is. This is um, this is very different than anything I've seen. So, you know, I, I got to do some research myself to see what I want to do. Because uh, if you are able to do this, what you're saying, I don't think your valuation is crazy. I think it's very cheap. And I, I just don't know why you're only raising $10 million. Is that even enough for you guys? Well, when we go to the public sale, that will raise $25 million from the public sale. So that'll be the raise at the public sale. So but the $10 million and then there's a $25 million public sale. So you'll have a total of $35 million going forward. Correct. Yep, correct. Okay, I feel That's better now. Yeah. And what if I can share this, Dow, because yeah, it's so unique and it's so... Uh, there's so many things that people haven't heard of before that we, we do get a lot of questions. So if you're okay with me sharing maybe a Discord link, because... We get yeah, a lot of questions and yeah, the guys there. will have, yeah, they'll have a lot of questions. So I'll share that because we've got a really good discord team there that will be really helpful to, 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 just I'll, to talk I'll, to people. Through I'll, I'll get your discord link from your, I'm, I'm a part of your discord. I'll get it. I'll put it in there for you guys. Don't worry about it. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't Thank worry. You. I'll put all your socials in there. So people know, uh, I, I mean, I'm just glad that there's really serious projects coming in a bear market. What I'm doing during a bear market right now myself is I am investing in those projects that I believe will make it long term and just kind of hopefully, you know, when things turn around, those projects do incredibly well. And you guys are one of those unique projects that I think people have to take a serious look at now. So thank you for coming on. You, you no, get a piece of so all three of us. us. What's up? You get a piece of all three of us with this one. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, if this works, Dex Finance, Dex shares are going to be worth a freaking crazy amount, man. Yeah. I, I better go get a couple more. <laughs> I was no buying doubt. the dip. I was buying the dip on Dex shares and then it dipped more. Yeah, so that's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, May, May 9th, our missions end. So we, we oh, switched, May 9th. May 9th, so what we happened? switched completely to, to uh, the real yields. Yep. Oh, okay. So what happens after May, May 9th on uh, deck shares? So right now, all of the all of our, our fees, all of our revenue um, is going just to support our protocol, building the POL and uh, uh, backing US decks. But uh, on May 9th, all of that revenue gets directed directly towards the shareholders. Oh, I and, see. And, and there's no more and there's no more inflation. So the, pre the pressure's off. And then what do you think? Like, how much are we looking per month per token? Do you know have any numbers yet? Uh, I'm not quite speculating, but there's some information in my, uh, my state of the union coming out at the end of the week. Okay. I'll you share see, it with you. Okay. All right. All right. This yes. I, and we're adopting a lot of what Dex Finance has done at EMP. I mean, we've had a great relationship, uh, with Jake over the last few months. And so we're moving to a very similar model, uh, of, of protocol owned emissions, um, so yeah, I mean, again, we, we feel like the, the sustainability of, of all of our ecosystems, uh, is going to be dramatically impacted, uh, and, and L1X is a catalyst, you know, to all that. And, and one last point too, uh, Dow King, you know, uh, I mean, I get it. Like I was that same guy like you, when Machu approached me originally, he said, Hey man, you got to take a look at this. And I said, there, there's no way that you guys are going to be able to do this. And I, I was blown away, man. I've been in crypto a long time. I can count on one hand, you know, the uh, the the layer one uh, uh, or, or yeah, uh, base blockchain launches I've been a part of or been have I've had access to. Uh, and one of those, again, we won't mention the name, but uh, it's been two and a half years, and they haven't even delivered yet. So yeah. again, the fact that Matu and his team uh, at L1X they have built this technology and now they're going to market that is such a better fundamental shift uh, of actually being able to deliver 
uh, on everything that they say. And again, I wouldn't put my reputation on the line. You know, the, the, the health of our protocol, if I didn't truly believe the revolutionary tech uh, that they're able to, to, to deliver. And again, you know, like you said, there is risk. Uh, obviously, yeah. it has to come to life. Um, but I'm, I'm really confident and I get excited, man. We, we, Jake and I, we nerd out over this because we know the, the possibilities that L1X could provide us uh, to build cool shit. So, totally. well, just to add to that, um, so Monday Eastern, I think it will be uh, next week, Monday Eastern, we're, we're about to announce something that's never been done before and demonstrate that. So keep an eye on our socials, keep, keep a lookout with, uh, with something we've just achieved and we'll be announcing and, and demonstrating something that's never been able to be done cross chain prior to now. So, wow. yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Well, guys, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, please go check out this project. These are the kind of projects you want to get into during these type of markets. And, um, you know, they're my two, I mean, I'm rarely blown away, but I I've read a lot of the documents that you've shown. And if, this works when you launch mainnet i don't know where you go i really don't know it, you know i think aj index finance guys might just retire off you so. <laughs> yeah no we can't do know. that we gotta build more stuff man <laughs> yeah we can't be retiring right jake oh my I, god bro i tell you what it's gotta, work. it's gotta work i tell you what i'm not waiting for that 30-year vesting that's for sure yeah no <laughs> doubt yeah. i'll be i'm gonna be gone long before that <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, we'll still anyway, be here. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I, I thank you guys. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we go? No, brother. I just really appreciate the opportunity. Again, I'll give these guys the last word here, but thank you again, Dow King, for all you do, brother. And uh, much love to you and the whole uh, Dow King thank community. You. Yeah, thank, thank yeah. I, just to add to that, um, thank you so much for having um, us on, Dow, Dow, to be able to talk about the project. Um, thank you to community for listening. And, and as I said, you know, check out our socials if they want to learn more, but I um, appreciate the time you've given us. All right, guys, I appreciate you, and we will all talk soon. Thank you. All right, talk to you soon.